50% of neurology professionals experience burnout at some point in their career. Can you explain what burnout is, first of all? You know, burnout has a lot of different definitions, but I like to use the World Health Organization um, definition of that. And at its core, it's a, three things. A feeling of complete exhaustion, not just tired, so exhausted that maybe you just sit on your couch and look at your phone all night and can't truly engage with your family. Two, cynicism and depersonalization. What that means is that even cynicism that anything can help and depersonalization that your patients become a stroke rather than a person, right? And three, reduce professional efficiency. And so what that looks like is somebody working 14 hours a day, but only getting about six to seven hours of work done. And what can we do about this? You know, burnout is an incredibly complex issue that should never try to be simplified down to one solution, right? But I can tell you what it's not. It's not just a personal resiliency deficiency, right? And so for too long, hospitals and organizations have tried to approach burnout by offering individual wellness programs. And while that can help with some of the problems, overall, we need system change that can create environments in which people can thrive, which at its core is about being able to get meaning and purpose in your work. Do you see mental fatigue or career unhappiness more in one discipline than another? You know, um, there is not a, a subspecialty of neurology, nor is there a specialty in medicine that's not affected by these issues. I would actually even go beyond that and say that it's not a physician-only issue by any means. It's something that has affected healthcare workers far more than the general public. So we do see rates pretty much between 40 to 60 percent across the spectrum within healthcare. And is there a stigma to seeking help? It's interesting that in healthcare there is actually a, a, a stigma against even self-care. Right? And part of that is because as physicians, um, self-sacrifice is one of the ways that we show dedication. So self-care can feel very selfish. In addition to that, uh, we often, there's this feeling that if you're struggling in some way, maybe that means you shouldn't have been a doctor in the first place. Maybe you don't even belong. And so physicians are, who die by suicide are twice as likely to have never sought mental health support. Mm. So to put that in perspective, if a physician were to have cancer, you know that they would be getting not just one opinion, but they'd get a second opinion and a third opinion from the best. But if they're suffering from depression or an addiction or anything along those lines, they're less likely to seek help. And what can people do to protect their well-being? When it comes to protecting our well-being, there's a lot of different things that we have to think about. Um, first and foremost is that I think that when it, when it comes to seeking help, people wait far too long. Right? So even something like counseling, it doesn't have to be if you have an anxiety disorder or a depression disorder, right? Counseling can be incredibly effective. I've sought counseling myself. There's no way that I could be a leader in the AAN and at my own organization and if I had not gotten the counseling that I need. In addition to that, uh, it's who we surround ourselves with, right? We have to remember the importance of social connection and we have to choose places to work that give us meaning, purpose, and align with our values. And what are your thoughts on the AAN designating well-being as an official value? I'm thrilled because what that means is that we know that it's not just about our academic work, it's not just about the amount of patients that we see, but it's about us thriving and, and that our well-being is directly related to the well-being of our patients and to our communities. And so it is an essential part of our success. It's like that airline safety video that says, put your oxygen yep. mask on before you help anyone else put theirs on. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Buckle. Oh, it's my pleasure.